Welcome, yogis. I'm so glad you could make it to the mat today. Um, I think it's important to remember that that in of itself is uh, the ultimate act of the important achievement because the rest of it is just letting our practice unfold. And today, uh, this week, actually, I'm inviting special attention on the breath. And that sounds marvelously easy, but I think it's actually one of the most difficult things that we do in our practice is to return our attention to breath over and over again. And especially when we're doing a lot of different poses and alignments, today we're doing flow, so we're moving from pose to pose and it may challenge your balance and all kinds of things. And so to return your attention to breath repeatedly is an incredible skill and attention. Um, and of course it won't be perfect, so we let go of that right now. But we're gonna spend the, be spend the beginning of our practice getting into the breath and awareness connected and hopefully also deepening the breath. Most of us when we're breathing in daily life on the exhale only expel maybe 60 to 70 percent. So we're going to take a moment to try and get our breath a little deeper than that and um, use our muscularity of the breath apparatus to compress out and expand in and then hopefully take that intelligence into our practice. Um, we will be doing a little meditation at the end if you'd like to, so you could have something to sit upon. And actually, early on in our practice here, we're going to be reclining over either the block or like a rolled up blanket or yoga towel, and we're going to be setting it underneath our kind of bra strap area, so just beneath or below the shoulder blade wing tips. So take a moment if you need to and grab something. Um, today I'm using the block. Monday I used the rolled up thingy. And um, so just to point out, if you go to recline over the block here and it feels like the floor is just not <laughs> coming up to meet the head enough, then just grab the uh, pair of socks even or a sweater or some cushion and put it under your head so that it makes easy contact with the floor ostensibly. If you're on the block, please check in and make sure that, again, that the wingtips of the shoulder blades are free to move, that the block isn't interrupting that, and that you're not feeling any major tension or pull. Whichever version you're in, you are being given an opportunity to notice the presence of breath uh, very deeply in that front meridian near the diaphragm and uh, the upper abdomen. If you are curious, you'll notice also some subtle stretching up into the clavicle area, and we'll hope to deepen that a little bit. So first of all, just taking this moment to become comfortable in this shape and then aware of the presence of breath. Begin breathing through the nose, slowly in and out. Turn your gaze up and in towards that third eye point between the center of the brows and up a little bit. And you might take the throat into a little contraction, our ujjayi throat breath. So it makes the sound of waves or wind. And now with your attention deeply inside this amazing body that you're in, begin to notice breath touching, massaging, various parts of the body, including the front and the side body in the rib cage. If at any point you feel tension or pressure in the head neck area, then you'll just roll off to the side and continue with this awareness on your back body in neutral. If you're still comfortable here, I'm going to have you add a little arm movement. So go ahead if you would and take your right arm straight up to the sky and then overhead as if you're trying to reach the wall behind. There's no intention to touch the floor if it happens, fine, but we're much more interested in the arm being completely straight. And then breathe into this and notice where you feel the stretch. And you can pulse that arm a little right and left. You can take the head with it, whatever feels natural or like a good release or exploration of breath. Always letting your body tell you and then returning that arm by your side, take the other arm up and over, reaching. Is this side different? Is this shoulder different? Are you experiencing a different location of stretch? And noticing where breath is massaging you. 
And when you feel complete, as I mentioned, you'll roll the head a little to one side. We never want to lift the head directly up because it can really tighten the front of the neck muscles. And as you're ready, come onto your body, back body, nice and flat. Get comfortable. Get loose. Take those feet a little wider than the hips. Let the hands kind of splay out. Maybe work your shoulder blades beneath the body so that the palms are inclined to rotate up a little bit. Don't force them. It doesn't matter how far they get. Again, focus your attention inward with your inner gaze. Light connection, tip of the tongue, and that soft throat breath. So in this position, I invite you to notice where breath touches or massages you. Probably those front areas and maybe side that we were talking about, probably with less drama in this position. So now see if you can bring breath, attention, and movement to the back body, the rib cage that's on the floor. See if you can press that towards the floor by expanding with breath. Again, twice more, using the breath to expand the body. We're not using the muscles to draw the abdomen or the spine down, just the breath expansion. And one of my favorite phrases that I invite you to use strongly today in your own mind, is there more? So as you're watching the inhale, observing the exhale, I found that the number one best way to stay present with the breath is that curious uh, curiosity. And in this case, the phrase that I help helps us stay curious. At least I find that effect on me. If you want to use something besides, is there more that works for you? Great. All right, we're going to come into compression and expansion. And this is the movement or action that will take that maybe 60 to 70 percent exhale to more like 97 to 98 percent exhale we hope so gathering a long inhale through the nose watching it expand the abdomen the chest the ribs and on the exhale belly drawing down towards the spine and down into the floor so now i'm using my muscles to See if I can make a powerful contact with the back body. Emptying, emptying, emptying. Is there more? And then releasing to allow the inhale. When you witness it coming towards complete, expand it. Sip in a little extra. And again, exhaling and compression. So ideally, we're breathing through the nose through this whole process. I'm a little stuffy today from all the stuff blooming out there in the beautiful nature but uh, so you might see me breathing through my mouth but other than sighing for example uh, you're generally breathing through the nose as best you can on your next round inviting you to add some movement so on your inhale i'm going to reach the arms overhead reaching from the heels through the middle fingers, inhaling, and notice where that last little bit of inhale comes. On the exhale, creating rock pose with sit-ups. So I'm going to make the hands into fists, draw the arms onto the sides, squeeze butt cheeks and thighs, and if possible, lift the upper body. If that's bothersome on your neck, leave that head lift out. Inhale and release and reach. Is there more? Is there more? our last little sip and in your own timing always yours exhaling coming into rock pose with or without sit up all right last round inhaling reaching reaching you can roll out wrists and ankles too if you ever get inspired we hold so much tension there and release take your arms overhead once more and if you would clasp one wrist with your other hand this is something we're going to do standing as well but i just want you to put your arm on the ground and in this shape as you breathe deeply my hope is you can notice 
in the side of the body that's elongated, that the breath really does get directed to that side. So when you're ready, go ahead and switch. So you'll notice that the shape of our body changes how we receive breath, where we're massaged by it, and even how deep our breath can be. And let's come into a nice tight little ball, knees to belly. And I'm going to invite you to deepen this into what we call seed pose, which is where you actually make a sit-up motion here. Um, and it changes the way our body receives breath, which is part of the fun. But again, if it bothers your neck, then just do the leg part like I'm doing now. Feet are flexed, shoulder heads anchored. Long inhale, asking, is there more? Exhale, belly to spine, thighs to belly. And if you can, add that little sit-up motion pressing out every last bit of exhale. Inhaling, soften, allow deep belly breath. Really let your belly press towards your thighs. And again, exhale, compression, little sit up here, making our tight little seed. And releasing. Placing the feet for bridge pose, right beneath the knees and working the shoulder heads beneath you. You might have the arms flat or bent 90, gathering a long inhale, slow, deep and wide. Exhaling, belly draws a little towards the spine, curls the pelvis up, and we're up into bridge. We're going to come in and out a couple of times. So on your inhale, descend as slowly as you can, really working the back body, you might feel a lot of action in the butt and hamstring area, and that's what we want. And as you're ready, exhale, rise. Really powering down through the shoulder, heads and upper arms. Inhale and release. And last time we're gonna come up and we're gonna hold for leg extension. So I'm gonna place my hands on the hip bones. I'm also gonna work my feet a little more towards each other. It makes it easier to create this leg extension without a huge hip drop. And most of us don't need more challenge. This pose often offers us enough. And so on our next round, I'm gonna ask you to add a little engagement. So come into your leg extension, make sure that You've got your hip as neutral as you can. And now press with your standing leg. Just push into the earth. Notice how it lifts that other hip. Good, other side. Trying not to use the neck. So staying soft through that part of the body. Press with the standing leg. And release. Awesome. Coming into happy baby. You might have your hands on the blades of the feet. Might be on the ankles. Uh, maybe you're grabbing a strap but inviting you here to draw the knees as close to the floor as you can, shoulder heads down, long, deep breath. And this pose, if we really expand the inhale, we're committed to it, we don't cut it short, there's often a stretch that will feel deep down into the hips and pelvis, and that's a great sign that you really got the full breath available. And on my exhale, I'm going to bring my feet together in this very active butterfly. If you prefer, you could have the feet on the floor for a more relaxed version. Otherwise, the option to add the sit-up and maybe even a little windshield wiper, bringing one foot towards the nose and then the other. And release. Nice. We're going to do one last little thing here, our robot. And I find robot is one of the best ways to really wake up the abdominal core and our strength there um, before we then try and come into flow. And when we're flowing, um, this is really the part of our body we want directing us and supporting us so that it's not all in the neck and the shoulders. When you're ready to begin, I actually like starting by bringing my knees closer to my belly, flexing the feet. And then as I root my back, boom, slowly taking the knees away as I approach right above the hip bones, I usually can feel like, oh yeah, this is the spot. It's, it's intense work to keep my back rooted, but it's not impossible and I'm not tightening my neck or struggling overly much. I'm gonna take my arms up in neutral, shoulder heads anchored, palms facing, neck soft. You can always roll your head to check in with it. Take a nice long inhale. 
exhaling power down through the back and you're going to take one heel towards the floor maybe just a little bit maybe touching down if you can while keeping your back rooted and exhale and come on back good inhaling exhaling other foot making its journey trying not to move the leg that's supposed to stay stable and come on back all right, we're going to do that again. I'm going to add the opposite arm reaching behind. So big inhale here in neutral, pressing our back into the floor as well as expanding the belly with breath. Exhaling one heel and opposite arm. The hand is reaching for the wall behind. Same thing, not for the floor, wall behind. And come on back. Inhaling slow, deep and wide. Is there more? And again, your timing may be different. Just follow your breath indication saying, yeah, we're done. We're ready for the next part. Is there more? And come on back. Okay. And we'll take a little break. So if this is an area of challenge for you, I would recommend doing robot every day. It's amazing. All right, we're going to spinal rock up to seated. And I'm going to have you come into kind of a, a seated uh, pigeon, if you will. So you're just going to lean back on your hands. I'm going to cross my right ankle onto my left thigh. If this does not work for you for any reason, wrists or this is just too awkward, lay back on your body and do the regular reclined version, right ankle onto left thigh. And you can just kind of wag your right knee a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate just a little to the left with the legs. And this is bringing me into a nice stretch into that right glute and hip area. You can deepen it by walking your left foot closer or walking your chest closer to the leg. And the easy way to get out is to walk that left leg back out, uncross, and let's cross the left ankle onto right thigh. You can see I've got my feet flexed. That's a great way to stabilize the joints as I begin to experiment rotating a little to the right, maybe bringing that right foot in a little tighter to deepen the stretch maybe not again you can kind of press the chest towards the thighs you can walk those hands in too so this is again very similar to reclined pigeon or a classic pigeon just gives us some different angles and you can even go all the way up to the outside if you want to play with spinal twisting so it's kind of fun and come on out good i'm going to take those legs out wide in a straddle and it doesn't matter how wide you are, but what does matter is if you can get seated upright. And as I invite you to come forward, keep in mind I'm wanting to reach my chest towards the wall in front of me. I'm not trying to look towards the floor. Feet are flexed. Big inhale, lengthen. Exhale, belly to spine. So this is where already in this stretch you want to start using that core strength. It'll really change everything. It's like the body knows when we're in our core, the body knows it's safe and it can release some of the stored tension from other areas that have been maybe gripping and unnecessarily holding on. And slowly release. We're going to walk those legs on in and I'm going to come up to standing or mountain pose. Maybe you want to do spinal rocking again. If so, knees to belly. And again, you can kind of play. How much effort does it take to get onto your feet but not overshoot? I'm going to take my feet a little bit wider than our mountain stance and do a little standing hip pump. So butt is out behind and then big butt squeeze. And we can add arms and a nice shoulder blade sandwich back there. And this is a wonderful way to renovate some of the tension and imbalances in the pelvis and low back from sitting too much or doing a lot of forward work like gardening. Hold, squeeze, and rotate one hip just a little right forward and one hip just a little forward, right and left. Good. And then we're going to come into our rag doll. So I'm just going to inhale and sweep up. Exhale, fold into ragdoll, knees bent, and let the head hang. Now this is a challenging place to breathe, right? So all that area in the front that we love to breathe into is kind of squished. 
So we've got a couple options. One is direct breath into your back, into your kidneys, the back of your lungs, and see if you can let that area receive the stretch. The other option is we can add a little extension, bring the hands up to the shins and extending forward. But we won't get that wonderful stretch into the back if we do that. So just see if you can hang out here for another couple of breaths. Last one. And inhaling, root and rise. Drop the butt and sweep up. Big glute squeeze forward. Exhaling, prayer hands. And you can stay as you are. I'm going to turn to face you so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm inviting you to bring one arm up and clasp it with the other wrist like we did when we were laying down. And then going to your side, check in and see if you can actually get that arm straight. If you can't or it's bothering your neck to use this hand, then drop it down. Deep breath. Good. Let's go to the other side. Is there more? We always want to let the body undulate with breath. And release. Nice. I'm going to bring my hands behind in yoga mudra, drawing the fist down. And again, what we should feel or experience is that shoulder blade sandwich between us, uh, between those blades. And if that's not happening, we probably need to place a sock or a scarf or something between the hands so you can give that a try. When you're ready to release, join me in a nice slow sweep out and up, maybe add a back bend, big glute squeeze, exhaling and fold. Commit to the fold, empty, empty breath. Then inhaling, halfway up, hands on shins, extend. And exhaling, plant the hands and step back, downward facing dog. So you can do it in as many movements as you need to. And once you're there, inviting you to begin a nice pedaling it out, exploring the back of the legs. If you've not been in downward dog recently, it's just an amazing discovery process. In fact, I go there every day and I'm always surprised by what I discover, depending on what I've been doing with my body. So please check that your shoulder heads are rotated nice and wide out away from the ears. And I've got my legs wide. And I'm going to keep them wide. If this is kind of new stuff to you, dog series and so on, I would bring them back together. Otherwise, we're just going to come forward inhaling to upward facing dog. So I've got my arms straight, my shoulder heads anchored, thighs are activated to the sky. Exhaling, downward dog. We're going to do that again. Notice what it takes to breathe fully into this upward dog as you create it. You're reaching back through the heels, forward through the heart. And like me, you might get a quite a stretch through the abdomen as you make the shape and add the breath. One more. Nice. And I'm going to bring those feet together. I'm going to take my right leg flying slowly so I can notice if I give up any alignment. You can always redo it. Go back to neutral if you need to. Take that right leg flying and then rotate the hip open. You can also rotate your chest open a little looking to the right if you'd like. Exhaling. Closely listen. Bring your right knee towards your belly. But then I'm going to actually have you cross underneath, okay? So this just takes a lot of attention. I'm on the blade of that right foot. Take a nice breath here. You should be feeling a stretch up the outside of that right leg if you've got any IT band tension at all. And release. Good. If your arms are tired, just take a break and come back in when you're ready. Big breath in. Open up that hip. Maybe open up the chest. And slowly, again, listen, knee towards belly. So I'm nicely in my core, and then I'm going to extend that leg through onto the blade. So I'm just getting a deep stretch through that side leg. I'm even getting it a little my hamstring on this one. And release. All right, I'm going to come all the way to my belly. You can drop to knees. Otherwise, just plank and chaturanga. Whew. All right, we're going to go into the front of the leg. So 
a supported way to get there into our pre bow bow. Place one forearm in front, nice glutes contracted down. That is key as you reach for your first ankle and then the second ankle. And I'm in bow pose basically, but I'm going to rest my head now so I'm in what I call pre bow, preceding the active part of bow. And here, just squeezing the glutes down, I've got a nice stretch through the front of the quads there, the front of the thighs, the quadriceps, even into the hip flexors a little bit. We're going to get more of that as we come into bow. But just breathe here and notice, please, the stretch that the breath provides. <sighs> Slowly as you're ready, press the ankles back into the hands and let it peel your heart away from the floor. Keep your neck neutral. So I've got my vision still on the yoga mat. I'm not trying to look forward, which will just compress the neck quite a bit. Breathing here. This is a challenging place to breathe. They'll be fast, but you can make them deep. Get really active. And release. Turn your head to the side. I always enjoy sighing breaths after bow pose and invite you to notice also if it's just a, a welcome release. Some of these postures are an immense amount of work because we're having to pull against our own body's tension. <laughs> and if you're like me, you've got plenty of that. All right, plant your hands just outside the chest, shoulder, heads anchor, pelvis anchors. We're going to come in and out of our cobra, just a nice pumping. Inhaling cobra, exhaling return. Get into breath. Is there more? What's it like to wait for the very end of it? To let it tell you. Where do you feel stretch? One more. And then we'll take it straight back to our child's pose. No wings, no shrugs. Bring your feet towards each other, knees a little wide. <sighs> All right, I'm going to offer something here that uh, hopefully you're, you're warm enough for. I, I bet you are. Um, the big mistake we make is thinking actually that we have to do a pose, like the whole pose, to have it be successful or worth it. Not so. Okay, so we're going to play with something here, mainly because I think it's going to make it hard for you to breathe. <laughs> Mostly because you'll be struggling to keep your balance, and a lot of us tend to hold our breath. So I wanted to offer this today. I'm going to walk my hands in a little bit from where I am in my child's pose. I'm going to come on to my feet. If you can't get there that way, then come from standing and come on down. <clears throat> and I've got my feet comfortably wide. They're not together. They're kind of like right in alignment with my knees. And then I'm going to take my knees wide because I'm going to play for just a moment of trying to balance and crow. And again, it doesn't matter if you get there. You'll get the benefit of the engagement, the heat, and the, the attention on breath. So I've got intelligent hands. If this bothers your wrists, by the way, feel free to go into tree pose or another balancing pose. Shoulder heads anchor down. And I'm going to lift my hips up and see if I can get one shin onto one tricep. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, just being here is hard to breathe, right? Because my belly's squished and everything. So I need to remember to breathe into that upper back and mid back. Big inhale. And all I want you to do, exhaling belly to spine, is shift your weight forward onto your hands and see if you can lift one foot. Good. Inhaling, return. Exhaling belly to spine like you did in compression. See if you can lift the other foot. Okay, let's do that again. Big full breath. Is there more? Last time on the second side. Nice. All right. Inhaling here in your neutral. Exhale, belly to spine, and see if you shift your weight both forward onto the hands. If you can get first one foot, and then the other. 
And if not, you're wobbling back and forth and so on, great. When you feel complete and your wrists have had enough, come on out, root and rise, inhale, big glute squeeze, exhaling, prayer hands. So the more balanced challenge that that was for you, the more kind of all over body heat you might be feeling. Let's step sideways on our mat and straddle. Rooting through the entire footbed, coming out into a five-pointed star with those arms extended from the heart. And you might feel that this is a marvelously open place to breathe after where you just were. So notice that and enjoy it. Breath moving into front, back, and sides. Good. And when you're ready, please just turn your right foot 90 degrees and settle those hips towards that right heel into your warrior two. On a long inhale, straighten that leg and reach straight up, counter reaching through the other hand. Nice big inhale. Exhaling, we're going to cartwheel it out to downward facing dog. So I'm going to kind of pin wheel my arms, plant the hands, and step back. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Nice drishti gaze between the feet. <sighs> So dog series or any portion, you could just do up dog, down dog, or cobra pumping again. Inhaling plank. And I always encourage knees down for the very first one and maybe all of them. Exhaling chaturanga. Nice slow, low push-up. Inhaling either cobra or upward facing dog. Cobra with the hips on the floor. Exhaling downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Make sure that sternum and belly are drawing into the back body. Marvelous. Slowly walk the hands back to the feet. And drape. Inhaling, drop the butt. Root and rise. Big sweep up. Exhaling, open to your straddle again. Five-pointed star. Nice deep breath. Maybe platter hands rotated open. Hmm. And rotate the left foot 90 degrees and settle in for your warrior two. Remember to check that your knee is straight over that heel. Letting breath lift and settle your body. On a long inhale, straighten the front leg and reach up. Counter reaching through the right arm. Again, noticing the experience of breath here in the left waistline. One more long inhale. Exhale. Fluid motion if you can, cartwheel it out, pinwheel, whatever you want to think of, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Ah, working those heels towards the floor. Inhaling to your plank, knees or feet. Exhaling, chaturanga, try to get your chest to precede the hips. And either hips on the floor for cobra or you can lift them off for upward dog. And exhaling downward facing dog. <sighs> Slowly walk the hands back to the feet. This is really good upper body work if you really push and reach. <sighs> good breath here, using that core, inhaling, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands. We're going to step sideways on the mat one more time. All right. So that movement that we were doing with our legs together earlier, that side body stretch, we're going to do it a little bit here in straddle. And I'm just going to do it with one arm at a time. And I'm asking you to really let the breath move you. So I'm inhaling and I'm extending. As I'm exhaling over to the side, I let the exhale take me, and then the inhale must bring me up a little bit. Exhale gives me room. Good, let's do one more. And my other hand's just kind of here. I'm not leaning on it. Good. Inhaling all the way up, and let that arm come down. Other side. 
exhaling takes you into a nice deep side body stretch if you're not making any breath noise you're not doing it right get really active in the breath really active in the core inhaling up and slowly releasing the arm nice we're going to step to the front of the mat again so this time our nice mountain stance feet are parallel and you could start in jet airplane arms or if you prefer prayer hands we're going to come into a full warrior series from here and if you prefer you could always go downward dog leg flying as well otherwise a couple of steady breaths here Bringing breath in the front, side, and back of the body. Long inhale, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands, left leg lift, standing crane. Slow and steady as you can. And if balance is your challenge, again, notice the tendency to hold breath. Slowly step back, crescent lunge. Your arm position, it might be jet airplane or out for a big hug or up. You could even add a back bend, reaching the heart forward. One more long inhale, asking, is there more? One more long inhalation and transli transitioning to warrior two. And there's always different ways to do that. You can do it with a big sweep or nice steady pieces, depending on where your balance is at. Thighs externally rotating, shoulders are stacked. So it's like we're between two panes of glass. And between those, the breath lifts and settles us. Inviting you to keep that front knee bent. Um, if you need to, you'll straighten it like we did in that last little bit of warrior. Otherwise, keeping that knee bent, the hips as far forward towards that front heel. Reach that right arm up and then over behind you as much as it will go without coming out of alignment. Again, I want to be between the two planes, two specific flat panes of glass or whatever you like picturing. And I'm noticing where breath is here. And I'm really inviting it to, again, play upon the body. Slowly reaching forward, elbow to thigh, shoulder heads anchor. Again, pause that you're between those two pains. I'm going to take my left arm initially down into a partial bind. So I'm rotating the hand so that the back of my hand will end up on my low back. And I'm going to do a little rotating here. So I'm going to inhale, give myself room by kind of rotating my chest a little towards the floor. And then exhale, belly to spine. I'm going to rotate and twist and see if I can open my chest a little towards the sky. Inhale and give it room. Nice long spine the whole time. Exhale, rotating chest towards the sky. It's like you're wringing a kitchen rag. Good. One more. And this time, open that arm and slowly reach it overhead, getting that last little bit of side body stretch. Nice. Release the left hand to the floor. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Now you can come down to your left knee if that's more comfortable. Otherwise, feel free to stay on the ball of the foot. We're doing prayer twist. So we'll start with the hand on the floor. And um, I've got my left hand on the floor, or you could use your block. And I'm going to bring my right hand onto my thigh. Big inhale, exhale, rotating to the right. Notice if your hips are kind of swinging out, bring them back neutral. So right hip bone back, left hip bone forward. 
giving it room on the inhale, exhaling and rotating more deeply. And you could experiment here with a true prayer twist, see if you felt like coming up elbow to thigh. This is more challenge in balance, which again is a great place to get loyal to breath. Is there more? Big inhale, give it room. Exhale, rotating, ringing the rag. Maybe you can look to the sky and release. Step back, reduce the swoosh, lift that foot. Beautiful. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Option to rest here or move into flow, dog series. Inhaling plank. Heels are pressing back, thighs to the sky. Exhaling, chaturanga, as slow as you can go. Inhaling, either upward facing dog or cobra. Big breath. Downward facing dog. So I can get to mountain for the other side of warrior, however, right? I could bring my hands one at a time back to the feet. I could lunge forward one at a time. I can also bend my knees and look forward between the hands. Now, if I want to do this hop that I'm going to try, bringing my feet to kind of where my hands are or between them, it's really important that this core part of my body is going to engage like it would in compression breath. That's what's going to help me lift rather than just sort of drag forward, all right? So bend those knees if you're doing this. Look forward, big inhale. And fold. Inhale, root and rise. Big glute squeeze. And prayer hands. Good, pause. Notice your heart rate, your breath, your temperature. And this is where I also always like to check in on kind of the subtle contractions or kind of tensions that we take on. Is your tongue sandwiched against the roof of your mouth? Is your jaw clenching? Any of those things, eyebrows furrowing. They're often a sign of kind of focus or intensity or striving. And what we want to do is be able to get into physical intensity in our yoga without sacrificing the breath or taking on all these little funky tensions that we do without even realizing it. So light connection to the tongue, maybe a soft smile. And when you are ready, inhale, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands, standing crane, right knee lifts. Nice, slow breath as you witness a little balance challenge, proprioception in that standing foot. Slow journey back. It's like you're picturing where that foot's going to land. Steer those hip bones. And again, come into your version, wherever you'd like to be. Jet airplane or straight out or up or a back bend. Some people like making a steeple hand and doing a deep back bend in this position. Not everyone's neck appreciates that. And by the way, you can always keep your head neutral, even if you're adding the back bend. All right. On an exhale, transitioning, Virabhadrasana two. So you can see I'm scooching my front foot, right? I'm exploring, hmm, how, how deep can I go? Thighs externally rotating, shoulders stacking, and arms extending out from the heart. Breath rising and settling. Is there more? If you need to give this front thigh a break, go for it. Otherwise, see if you can hold and reaching up through that left arm. Go ahead and take that right hand and bring it behind in a partial bind in this pose. I know I didn't add this on the other side, but this is kind of a neat place to experience it. Keep pressing the rib cage forward, reaching back through the hand. And you can, if you've already got the bind, you can just keep it as you extend forward and then place that left elbow. Otherwise, if not, and you've got it, then add it by rotating and bringing the back of the hand to the lower back. You're always taking your head, neck kind of vision to, to whatever is easeful on the neck. We always want to reduce strain there. 
So again, I'm going to begin rotating and pulsing. The inhale, I move my chest a little towards the floor. The exhale, I'm rotating towards the sky. And as I do that, this right hand, the binding hand, is going to be able to move towards my left thigh a little bit more. There's actually a deeper bind where you hook your fingers in around the inside of this thigh, theoretically. Oh, almost got it there. But we also don't want to do that if it bothers the shoulder, FYI. Slowly unwinding that next exhale. Really enjoy that reach of the arm towards the ceiling. And then overhead towards the wall. Oh, press your left rib cage into the right and enjoy that wonderful stretch as you inhale. Good. Exhale, belly to spine, rotate towards the floor. Plant the right hand either on the floor or grab a block. And I'm moving my left foot a little further to the left, so I'm not on such a, a kind of tightrope balance beam. Totally up to you. Big inhale, my left hand's on my thigh. Again, you could be knee down. Exhaling, belly to spine, and rotating. So the arm is doing very little of it. I'm trying to make it come from the center body, the abdomen drawing towards the spine. And continuing either here or seeing if you could come up to rotate that right elbow onto the left thigh. And maybe it's just that, and that's plenty. Otherwise, if you can bring the hands together, you wanna try and get the right chest away from the right bicep so I'm not collapsing in fact, which makes the pose harder because we need our core support. Big breath in. And on your last exhale, see if you can rotate your vision towards the ceiling. Make sure that the legs are staying strong. And release. And step back, downward facing dog. Long inhale, exhale, sigh. <sighs> Deepening that dog. Good. All right, we're going to bring the right knee forward towards the right wrist into pigeon. I find it's really nice when you've been in flow for a while, you've done a lot of butt and hip work to add this in. You could also do reclined pigeon again. But I am going to offer a slightly more active version here, a little bit of tractioning. And you'll have to see how it works in your body. So first of all, we never do this pose if it's bothering our joints. That's the first rule. But also we want our back to be happy. And so being all the way up may not be my position. It may be on the forearms. For me, it's hands on the floor, but elbows bent and nice kind of engaged shoulder heads down the back. That's a good position for my body. I'm going to curl my left foot under on the ball and I'm going to flex my thigh towards the sky. Boom, flexing my heel back. And this right here is creating a nice uh, a lot of power in that left leg. Also a good bit of stretch in the front and the kind of hip flexors and so on. Taking a nice deep breath. And then I'm going to engage as if I'm trying to shorten the mat between my legs. So I'm squeezing with my right leg and trying to bring it back towards the left. It's as if I was trying to wrinkle the mat. And what I notice is it kind of pops my hip up, right? So if you can hold this and it doesn't hurt, see if you can walk your hands back towards you and then see if you can add jet airplane arms and breathe. Usually about two or three breaths is my good maximum there. Relax the foot, relax the pose. And when you're ready to come on out, you can go to table or you can go to dog. Um, I like either way kicking that right leg out and then rotating it. So whether you're doing that in table or dog doesn't matter. It's just what's most comfortable for wrists. Bring that left knee forward. And again, maybe you're doing the recline virgin version. But uh, what's important is no joint pain and that you're getting some, some good stretch into the hips. And in this case, this version we're actually getting some deep activity as well. So when you are ready, find your right angle, curl that back foot under, power through that back leg, deep abdominal breath. So I'm just noticing on this side that I have a completely different stretch than I did on the other side. And that's the kind of thing I want you to pick up on in your body 
but it's only with the deepened breath that I feel it. All right, I'm gonna begin my tractioning now, that kind of trying to shorten the space between the legs. It kind of brings me up into this engaged position. I also need to make sure that that right thigh bone's powering to the sky. And then I'm gonna to try to release these arms into jet airplane. Maybe you can only do one at a time. Play with it, but commit to breath. Soften, release, and take your time coming out to give that left leg and hip a little love up. If you're able to be in kneeling like so, um, with your butt on the heels, great. I'm going to just offer you a nice stretch through the front body here. If not, you could do pre-bow again or our standing quad stretch as well, where you're just clasping one ankle at a time. Otherwise, bring those hands back. And when you're ready, nice glute squeeze and release. So it's just very similar, actually, to the other quad stretches. And one more. Marvelous. All right. We're going to come on to our back body for a final bridge pose, a way to kind of balance it all out even more before we try to come into our seated meditation. So please have the feet right beneath the knees again. Big inhale. And as you press up through the exhale, just notice. Notice what's happening in the backs of the legs, what you might be feeling through these hip flexors. These uh, legs have done a lot of work for you just now. And it's interesting to notice what it's created in the body. And in your own time, release. And for a moment here, maybe for many moments for you, if you choose to just stay on your back instead of move to seated, just for a moment, get heavy, get loose and wide like we started. So, you know, feet kind of rolling open, letting the arms just be soft. If your shoulder blades are kind of digging into the earth, work them underneath you a little bit. And then take a moment to explore any neck tension you might have taken on and release it. So one of my favorites is just rolling the head side to side and then also tilting the head up and kind of drawing the chin into the throat. So doing an undulation that way. And then settling into a neutral. They often say that our Shavasana is only as good as the last pose that we did before uh, we went into resting. But also, just in general, the vigor of the flow and some of the held poses and intensity that you've done Today, I'm hoping we'll leave you with a body that just feels very ready to be still, be soft, and be heavy. And so if you have found that, I would recommend just staying put. If you are drawn to come up right into a seated meditation, then do so. Make sure you've got something that's the right level, the right comfort. We never should be striving in meditation. And let's all take our attention to the breath once more. And now we'd like a breath that is completely effortless. So there's no compression and expansion. There's no ujjayi. There's no effort to lengthen it or deepen it. Just the gentle rising and settling of breath like a baby sleeping. Now that the breath is more subtle, can you still notice where it's showing up in the body? Can you notice that very soft massage and the lifting and settling as the breath happens.
Inviting you to scan the body and just reflect, did you experience breath touching the body in any new way today? A deeper place, a surprising sensation as a result. Did you notice any left to right differences? As you move throughout the rest of your day and the coming week, I invite you to have your attention very strongly on the breath and maybe even write yourself a little note here or there so that you have something to remind you. But it's very interesting to notice in life off the mat, how does breath change when we're in particular shapes? How does breath change when we're in a particular mind state? We're focused on something, it might be something relatively unstressful, chopping vegetables or doing dishes or something. When uh, does the breath shift? Perhaps when we're in a emotional state that maybe is something a little upsetting or something really exciting, what happens to the breath? Ideally, we'd love the breath to become this very steady series of waves, you know, much like the ocean, it just keeps coming and going, and coming and going. If you found a very deeply relaxed place, feel free to stay longer. And I'll be closing the practice with the bowl and three ohms. Always delighted to have you join in or be quiet as you are needing to be. If you're going to join me in oming, please have your attention be very much on, is there more? Can you get a deeper inhale? And then also the experience of vibration that the ohm creates in your body. If you're laying down, you'll feel it much more strongly because the floor works like a, like a sounding board um, on your body. Let's gather that first long inhale. Om Shanti Shanti, Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Namaste.